heard a siren coming down the road, and, and about that time, then the police officer pulled in the park. And uh, I, I thought that he was pulling in a little bit close because that guy already had the rifle propped up on that train and fixing to cut out on him, you know. And uh, I thought, well, I'm going to see what's going to happen here, and if I need to, uh, you know, get in on it. And so, about that time, the officer got out of the car and he went shooting at him. And he ran around the back of the car. And I thought, man, he's fixing to kill that boy. And I thought, well, I think that guy's going to take him out if I don't help him out, you know. And he was shooting with an AR-15, the cop was. And uh, so he wasn't hitting him. But he, that tree was protecting him, the shooter. And I had a side view of that man the whole time. Standing there, and I thought, I'm fixing to put one in him if I can. And uh, I made a shot, I guess, probably, I managed a good 165 yards from where I was at. And uh, I thought, man, I thought, I hope this magnum bullet will hold up, you know, that distance. And sure enough, it did, and I hit him in the thigh. And he went to the ground. And uh, that disoriented him. And uh, then he turned, and I saw him throw another shell in that rifle and he pointed at me and cut out on me. And, uh, but he didn't hit me. Uh, he must have hit the ground because I was standing behind the wheel of this RV of Browns. And uh, I felt the rocks. I had on a pair of shorts and I felt the rocks uh, fly up and hit me on the leg. And it cut one, cut my left leg there a little bit. But uh, anyway, uh, then that's when I returned another shot and uh, I hit him again and I put uh, three more in him. And uh, then that, by that time then that uh, patrolman, he got two shots in him with that AR-15. And seemed like he's all over with then because we got him down and, and killed him. You know. And then uh, about that time then the DPS officer came in I mean, he wheeled in there. there was, I believe there was another, another. Uh, he might have been a deputy, one of the other boys. Anyway, they uh, hollered at me and told me, he said, put the gun down, get on the ground. And I did. They were going to handcuff me. Of course, they didn't know what was going on. And I laid there on the ground, I guess, probably 15, 20 minutes. And then they finally got me up and took the cuffs off. And after they found out what was going on. And it uh, seemed like the deal was all over with then, you know. We didn't got him down. So it's been an ordeal. An average working person, <laughs> you know. And uh, I don't want to be, I don't want to be put in that range, you know. I'm just a citizen trying to, trying to help an officer out. That's what I was trying to do. Because I think if it, if it had kept going, it he'd probably killed the officer. And that's what all the uh, other <clears throat> policemen out there, you know, told me. Said he thought it probably, it probably got him too. And uh, that's about all I, that's about all I can say about it. Yeah. Uh, it's a tragedy, but there's nothing you can do about it now. Never been in no trouble like that or anything, you know, before. And I thought, well, man, I've got to do something quick and do it now, you know. And uh, that's when I jumped in there and put that first shot in him and knocked him down. Because uh, that other boy couldn't get a good shot on him, you know. And, uh, so that's the way it is, you know. And he's got to live with it now.